hate crimes too. The same. Where, where same. do you think we would be if Elon hadn't bought Twitter? Uh, different world, right? Yeah, that's that, that's I, I think Elon Musk is uh, he is actually preserving free speech. One of the main people preserving free speech in America right now, and going into space. So it's always, it's always funny to me when people. When the left tries to nitpick and needle at him, it's like, this is one of the most significant human beings on the planet right now. And literally one of the most significant human beings historically ever. Right. Like, he's like a Nikola Tesla type character that people are going to be talking about 100 years from now. And he'll, you know, SpaceX will launch a rocket and it'll blow up or something. Uh, Stephen yeah. King was making fun of him. Right. Yeah, you'll have someone like Stephen King, like, <laughs> rocket blew up. It's like, dude, what... Yeah, your rockets don't blow up because you don't build them. I mean, uh, <laughs> not only that, like he made this tweet about how it, it damaged the ionosphere that when it blew up. But do you know that that like heals up in like 40 minutes? Yeah. <laughs> like, he didn't even bother looking into that. Like every time they punch a rocket through that shit, it damages it. But it, it heals. It's like it punches. It's like, you know, you punch a hole through a cloud. And, and a lot of times when they say that the rocket malfunctioned or something is actually doing exactly what it was supposed to do. This is a test run or whatever. But yeah, they have to test tolerances and parameters. They do, they, I mean, they have a lot of them blow up. Yeah, that's what you have to do until you get one that doesn't blow up. Yeah, you, you, and you need, and we just need people in the world. It, this is very much the uh, it's like the Teddy Roosevelt uh, man in the arena, you know, speech. You need people in the arena who are actually trying to do s stuff, yeah. do do important things. Uh, you need people like that. Yeah, and of course, social media gives a platform for people who are like not doing anything at all. To just sit and snicker at the few people in the world who are trying to achieve something. Yeah, but that's okay. That's okay too. That's their free speech. You know, let you know if that's what Stephen King wants to do today, <laughs> let him go. Who cares? You know, it's it's interesting to watch. It's all of it is interesting to watch. You know, there's there's a a lot of people out there that are fools, and they serve as uh, education to others. You see the folly in their actions and behaviors and how stupid they look and how ridiculous this whole thing is. And it's there for you. You learn from those people. You can you could you have a better understanding of human behavior. You have a better understanding that people are capable of, you know, being really interesting, intelligent people, but also being buffoons at the same time. And that, you know, we're all subject to all these various influences and especially through the use of social media, which just like I said before, it's just it's an anxiety creating machine. And there's so many of these people that are attached to it that are so deeply rooted in these online conversations and so disconnected from the natural world. And it's odd. It's odd to watch. But they're there for you. They're there for an education, an understanding, a greater understanding of the, the weird nuances of human thinking. Because that's gen that's genuinely what this whole thing is all about. All the ideologies and all the you know left and the right and the immigrants are great and immigrants are terrible and they're eating ducks. All of it is just human thinking, trying to figure out what's the correct and incorrect way that we all cohabitate, and what's what's the best way for all of us to sort of get along. Yeah, I mean that's the catch twenty two of social media because it could be, if you use it exactly the right way, it does give you access to. A all these human beings and the way that they're thinking about things, which can be quite enlightening. Um, but most people don't use it the right way. And also you have to use it the right way. And you can, this is also why my opinion, my, my kids, none of my kids have smartphones or social media. They're going to get bullied. Well, they're not on, they're not on social media. So <laughs> they're they going to get bullied by how, how old are your kids? Uh, our oldest are 11. Uh, that's 11 young enough. They shouldn't have social media. Yeah, I agree with you there. But as they get into like the high school ages, like uh, I think it's a new world. We're navigating it. They should learn how to navigate it too. I think it is very addictive, but it also there's people that know how to walk away from it and know how to self-regulate. And I think that's a valuable skill that I think everyone's going to have to learn.